Wishing you a happy and healthy new year from News Channel 8. Good evening and welcome again to Politically Incorrect. Let me introduce our panel for this evening's show. This is uh, Mr. Larry Gelbart, probably the most brilliant writer of thoughtful comedy in, I don't know, several generations. Uh, also this week. this week, also a good friend. Uh, and this is uh, Roy Romer, who was the governor of Colorado, now the superintendent of our schools here in Los Angeles, and I've been a longtime admirer of his. And this is Stephen Collins, an all-around smart guy, political activist, actor, novelist, it's a very thoughtful panel, and there's a lot of issues I want to get to. Before I do, I have to address uh, Monday's show, and I should clarify a few things that were said. Um, you know, this show has always been off the cuff. That's the beauty of it. It also causes problems because you say things which uh, you need to explain more. Uh, but, you know, these are sensitive times, and I should have been more clear when in a discussion of how we have in the past conducted our war on terrorism, I said, we have been the cowards lobbing cruise missiles from 2,000 miles away. And the problem there is the word we, I think. It's indistinct, and I should have been more clear. Uh, and so let me be very clear now. In no way was I ever intending, because I never think this way, to say that the men and women who defend our nation in uniform are anything but courageous and valiant, and I apologize to anyone who took it the wrong way sincerely, and I'll get to that. But my criticism was for the politicians, mostly, who, fearing public opinion, have not allowed the military to do the job which they are absolutely ready, willing, and able to do. And now that they can, I have no doubt they will do what they have always done and get the job done. A lot of people now think that patriotism means just marching in lock lockstep and shutting up. And I'm sorry, but, you know, when the same terrorists who committed this heinous crime against our country a week ago, those same people, when they blew up two of our embassies in Africa three years ago, uh, I know it's Africa, and I know that's a long way away, but that was still... Hundreds of people died, and embassies are American soil. And our political response was to blow up a pharmaceutical factory in the Sudan from far away. And I am not unpatriotic to question how our government has handled the situation in the past. Patriotism does not involve shutting up. It involves speaking out. Okay. So, um, So I would invite your comments on all this and about the, the necessity, or if you don't think so, for dissent at this time. This country was founded on dissent. This country took issue with the way we were being governed. And if we stop now, uh, it's a giant leap, not only backwards, but into some kind of dark America that we never knew about. Yeah, the, uh, the countries that don't allow dissent are the countries that harbor terrorism. So yes. we... we I think that, you know, the spirit of the dissent right now, and you're being very careful tonight, and you're being very sensitive to the way people take your words, and I think that's great. Uh, I mean, but we have, we're going to keep debating. This is a country that second guesses everything, Monday morning quarterbacks everything. It's part of our system. It's how, we, how we're sure that we've done things right or how we learn not to do, make the same mistakes. Right. We've got to do it. And, uh, the, the I'm sorry, please. Yeah. Well, there, I think you're dead right. Dissent is necessary, but one of the problems is we don't know what we're dissenting against right now. I think the nation's really reaching for what is the appropriate response. And I think your point that military action, I'm a former member of the Air Force. Uh, I was a lawyer in it, so I'm, I don't want to take credit for flying. But in terms of military response, you've got to recognize that there is a cost of human life. And I think the point that was being discussed prior uh, is that the political community I think has had a problem of how much human life can be expended in order to protect our nation. We got a new world here, a new piece of history, and I think that we have yet to figure out right. how we can protect democratic uh, values and how far we may have to go, both with military action, but also 
I don't think you're fundamentally going to solve this problem unless you reduce the level of hate. And I think we need to look both at what we do in a short run on punishment and holding accountable, but in the long run, uh, remember that picture of those, at, uh, those uh, students in Pakistan, you know, who were saying, I'm learning how to hate America? We've got to get at that problem also. Or what about the picture? I mean, the, <laughs> yes. Um, you mentioned how much we can take. I remember when we went into Somalia. Now, you may disagree with the action to go in there at all, but when one picture of an American soldier who was killed there came back, the decision was made politically here in America that we did not have the stomach and we withdrew our troops for that endeavor. It was politically incorrect to show a dead American soldier. Right. But Bill, just to go back to the beginning uh, of, your, of, of tonight's program, uh, you know, the president himself admitted that he misspoke when he called this a crusade. Yeah. So I think, <laughs> I'm not equating you with the president. Thank you. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But and, and I am rooting for him. I said that last all, night. If we you don't know, root for him, yeah, yes. I mean, I mean you, can, we, you can root for him why, without reserving your right to shut up about what he's doing. We have the right to say we should, excuse me, Mr. President, I think we should handle it this way. And excuse me, Mr. President, don't call it a crusade because that's very inflammatory right. to the Muslim people. But just, just to fit, we are, as you say, groping. We're feeling our way along. And, and I think we make, do ourselves a great disservice perhaps a fatal disservice if we start having a pissing contest about semantics because in the face of yeah. a real enemy to go after we're going after each other I, you know what I, I must say thank you for bringing that up because I, I find it cowardly that a couple of people took a buzzword and made it an issue when there are real issues to think exactly. about. I mean, well, we did the show Monday. I did 10 interviews after the show with all sorts of press people. Nobody mentioned this. Nobody mentioned it the next day. I got 50, 60 calls, messages. This is a couple of people who smell a controversy. And to use this tragedy to do that when nobody thought that what I was criticizing the military themselves. And our government deserves some criticism for the way this has been handled. And I have been a major supporter of the military on the show. I have argued with the liberals about this time and again. I've been the only one on this panel many times who said the government's number one priority is the military. Pay them more, respect them more, give them more. I'm the guy... Anyway. This is exactly what we need, though. We need these continuous town meetings on this level, without pundits, me accepted, of course, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. for, for people to express themselves, however yeah. haltingly or whatever. I mean, we need to vent, and we need to... Ex and I, God bless this show for being here for that. And well, we need... Yeah, but, let, me, let me say... But, you know, look, we, we really need to be very thoughtful. As a, a head of a school district, I've been trying to say, this is a teachable moment. We can learn a lot, and uh, it's a terrible tragedy. But l let me say, uh, we need to be patient, and we need to be deliberate uh, about how we respond. We, I think we have to be very forceful. You can't allow this to continue, but uh, uh, we, we need to remember that there are very many Muslims in this world that are going to be watching very carefully how we respond. And I think we have to respond, but my plea is, be very thoughtful and careful. You know, we ought to talk to the Russians about what their experience was in, in Afghanistan. They're telling us. But well, you you know, a week ago, uh, a week ago, I didn't know that Afghanistan is already in ruins. It's in rubble. It's been destroyed. I mean, the, the people are starving. There's nothing much we can do to them. A week ago, it seemed, you know, the response of let's go get them made sense. Interestingly enough, in the last few days, the rhetoric coming out of the White House is more reasoned. I mean, I think the White House is starting to hear us. It's starting to hear the debate. It's starting to realize that no one's going to look uh, soft if they if they go about this slowly. I think, frankly, it probably creeps out the terrorists a little more that we didn't take bin Laden's bait and go right for the button. I don't and think so. I don't think so, respectfully. Uh, you know, Ronald Reagan said, they can run, but they can't hide. Well, they ran and they hid. Yeah. You know, and... and right. Uh, and, and for and all the saber rattling, you know... Uh, how is that disagreeing? I don't understand how you're disagreeing. Uh, I'm missing something. I forgot what I was disagreeing <laughs> okay. about. I came right from home and we were... Because I totally agree that, they, that they, have, they have hidden, absolutely. And, and Colin Powell said we're going to cut it off and we're going to kill it. 
in the right. Gulf War. Remember that? What's well, the, we didn't kill it. We it crawled it. away, and it still lives. And of right. course, we're talking about Saddam Hussein. Yes. So it, it, I think it is dangerous when you pump up people with some rhetoric that you can't follow up on. Well, the president said, is pumping us up, and I think, right, you know, it, to a certain degree, he's right. But then Colin Powell and other people are saying, have patience, have patience. Well, it's a kind of a, a cross-purposes uh, uh, preparation that we're receiving. Well, right. it, but I think it's also great that they're not telling us everything, and the media has to right. get used to the fact. You know, the, the media for the last generation coming out of Watergate in Vietnam got used to the fact that they were entitled to every bit of information that they could get and that they should regurgitate it right to the American public. And I think some people in the media are a little shocked now that they're not being invited to do that. But can you imagine trying to plan D-Day, you know, in the age of 24-hour right. news? No. We can't do it, and we've got to respect that. And I love the fact that the White House is, and Powell are being very clear about that. Okay. I have to take a commercial. We'll be right Those of you who are just joining us, uh, I wanted to mention that that chair is empty all week. Uh, we announced this each night for Barbara Olson, who was a, a favorite guest of ours and a friend, and she was uh, supposed to be here last Tuesday night. She was on one of the planes. Mm. So uh, we leave that open in tribute and uh, cherished memory for her. Now, we were starting to talk about... Um, the president, at the end of last night's show, I compared him to Shakespeare's uh, Henry V. If you don't know the play, as, as I just remember the bare bones of it, but Henry V becomes a great king from being a sort of a dissolute young man. He drank a lot with false That's why they call him the fifth. That's why they call him the fifth. <laughs> but you know... <laughs> right. And uh, it took a war to transform him from the guy who drank with Falstaff to this, this great king. And the great line from the play is, he says, presume not that I am the thing that I was. So do you think our president is becoming Henry V? Let, let me say, I think he is responding very well. I served with him as governor. I'm rooting for him. I think we all we are. We are. But uh, yes. let me, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think that the, the mobilization of the goodwill of this country is very necessary, but I, let me add a constructive comment. I think we need to uh, be careful about the rhetoric, if I can use the word, that we use. I mean, his speech about we're going to root out evil in this world, I think needs to be narrowed. Uh, we're, we're just, yeah. it, it's too broad a target. And, that does uh, raise the bar a little. It's, it's that, raised that, it, that could yeah. be the Democrats, too, and, you and, know. Yeah. And the other, the other <laughs> thing, the other thing is, uh, you know, I want, him, I want him dead or alive. You know, mm -hmm. I, I understand yeah. that follows a great Western tradition, which the cowboy can identify with. But let me tell you, we need to be very resolute, very tough, but very sober. And yeah. the, the other thing we need to add is, there is another dimension of this that we got to heal, and that is. You can get all the bin lines in the world, but you're still not going to solve this problem unless we close this gap of hate. Yes. And we're going to... Yeah. You know, Bill? Yeah, and fr Friday I'm going to have three young Islamic men here to, to ask that one question. Why do they hate us? Yeah. Bush had a moment uh, last week that made me think, you know, that your Prince Hal thing is apt. When he... he was doing the press con conference and he almost broke down and and then he recovered and spoke very strongly and totally off the cuff nothing prepared and I, I looked at him and I said that's the man we want to see a man who's right. full of the feeling and the impact of this but who's still decisive and I thought you know when JFK came to office he was a spoiled rich kid yeah. who had not done anything in either the House or the Senate he had he had introduced no important legislation he'd done nothing his father probably bought the election right and then, you know, the Bay of Pigs came along and sobered right. him up, and the missile crisis came along, and who knew? Harry Truman was a joke when he came to office. He was a joke. Right. We were in despair that this man had become president. Ronald Reagan, Sir? people used to joke about. Yeah. As, you know, he was an actor. How could he be a president? Well, that's a good question, but anyway. Uh, not about Reagan, but how could an actor be a president? Uh, two things. Uh, Harry Truman, uh, by the time he became a senator, had read every book in his hometown library. A couple of times. He mispronounced words because he never heard them said. He wouldn't uh, have been good on TV, and so we, you know... Well, were, fortunate for him, he didn't know, have to be. He had Milton Berle to, yeah. to go on for him. <laughs> uh, JFK was quite a good scholar as well. Now, with no disrespect and no dissent and no treasonable uh, feelings of forethought, uh, 
George II is not really a great improvisational speaker. No, he's he's dead. No, he's he was wonderful in the, at the cathedral during the services when he read a beautifully prepared right. a script. Wait, let me just, one, yeah. I'll be through in an hour. Uh, <laughs> but I think I would advise him as a citizen who didn't vote for him, but as one who's voting for the country, right. to say as little off the cuff as possible. We're going to get more crusades, dead or alive, uh, run them into the ground, those right. kind of Reagan-esque, unfortunately, lines uh, that, that he may not be able to, del to deliver on. I would just, he's got to be a better communicator than he is, and he can only be that, I think, if, if his material is prepared, which is fine, because he has none of the Churchillian or Rooseveltian flavor. You know, I actually right. don't agree, because I think the moment that, that I was speaking of, uh, which was not, in which he didn't speak out of turn at all, was just what the American public needed, and the fact that he dared to speak off the cuff, uh, I think, when he was obviously feeling that much, was a very healing he moment. He was good in New York, too. When he, he was great. With the but Stephen, horn, he's when not he going to be able to be emotional from now on. We, we want right. facts That's true. or what right. they can tell us. But he has, to, you know, he has to grow into this moment, and he has to take the chances, and, and we have to hope that he's got billions he's, of people. Here. When anyone can get on an airplane, for whatever reason, leave their bags, we should have nationalized that long ago. You know, uh, security. It's the security. It's the I'm silly sure. safety Absolutely. that we care but about. Bill? There's a lot of silly safety, you know. Bill? They, the asbestos in the World yeah. Trade Center that they took out that wouldn't have killed anybody but would have prevented that fire. But that's, you, yes. You talk about the government, and I, the only thing I take issue with is that the government, and particularly in terms of our defenses and the CIA, that was us. I mean, we are the government. The, the government really is the collective consciousness, whether we like it or not, of the country. And we and particularly my generation, our generation, the children of the 60s who thought we'd achieved world peace, said to the CIA, don't do that, that's unsavory, don't hire those people. We, we, gave, we ridiculed them, but we if, handcuffed them, we made it hard for them to do their job. And but then, if they were leaders, they would have said, shut up children, we have a job to do. That's what leadership is. But we get, the leaders, we get the well, leaders we get, that we you're, deserve. You're we right get the leaders the we ask for. Safety. I mean, the airlines uh, and uh, the security system there, we absolutely have failed. And uh, I think we need to beef up our intelligence system. But this is a time in which uh, we need to be thoughtful about what, what do you give up in order to protect yourself? You've got to give up some, yeah. but don't do too much. But well, before we go there, how much was the CIA's budget last year? Was it in the neighborhood of 60? $30 billion. $30 billion. I think that's around the it's, budget. It's of the somewhere there. I yeah. thought it was more, but it's been advertised as that much. I mean, I think we have a right to expect for that kind of money. Yeah. Some measure of right. But we've told I mean, them, central intelligence. But we've told them not to do it in a way. We've told them don't please don't do it in a way that won't play well on TV if we get caught. And you can't you can't hamstring them that way. I, I know, but they're the plumber. They got to fix the sink. Okay. We hire we, the plumber. I know, but we aren't the plumber. All right, we'll have this debate on another night. We've got to take a break. All right, I'll just leave you with Edward R. Morrow. We must not confuse dissent.